it's Kales. I'm feeling a little self-conscious because it's summertime again, which means uh, we have no AC in my house and it's ridiculously hot because I can't open the window to film because it's noisy. And so there's just no point in like putting on makeup and looking nice. So you just get me as I am, people. Take me or leave me, baby. I won't break out into rent. Anyway, all that aside, I'm going to talk to you about the books I read in the month of May, aka a May wrap-up. That's what they're called here on the booktubes. Wrap-up. It's wrap-up season. I read seven books in the month of May, which I'm ridiculously proud of. That's that's going over my one a week that I've been thinking I was gonna do and yay. I read Clockwork Angel at the recommendation from Jordan at the Jordan Journals because she said it was very different than the Immortal Instruments series. Guys, I think I've just resigned myself to the fact that I don't like Cassandra Clare's writing. I don't like her storytelling. I'm not a big fan of this world. Don't hurt me. I think I gave it like a three out of five stars, but that still feels generous to me. I was bored. A lot of the time I was bored. Everybody was like, oh, it picks up in the last hundred pages. I don't want to read a book that picks up in the last hundred pages. I want to read a book that picks up through the whole 400 pages. Not my cup of tea. Not my favorite. That's okay. I had other books that I liked. This next one is Daughter Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor, which is actually a reread for me, but I buddy read it with my friend Leah over at Drums of Autumn. And we had a blast buddy reading this together. I loved getting to hear her reactions. I really was reminded of how much I love this world that Lainey Taylor created, but then it got ruined like two thirds of the way through and it was not, it, I didn't care anymore. And I didn't like what she did with the characters and so I gave it a three out of five stars. It's more like a 3.5 because I forgot how much I was intrigued by this world and how much mystery there is. And I really, really liked it. I have the second one. I want to read it one day, which is why I've kept it, but also why I haven't bought the third one because I'm not too encouraged. So maybe somebody should give me some encouragement that maybe it gets better. I enjoyed reading it with Leah. She was wonderful, loved her comments. I loved getting to share this story with her and then I hope that we can do it again soon. Then I got myself back on my nonfiction kick, which I'm also really excited because this was on my May TBR that I, I, I actually read it and it's Big Magic. Uh, Creative Living Beyond Fear by Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love, among other books. I saw her talk and it was amazing, guys. It was so inspiring and really cool. I gave this book a four out of five stars because even though it was really interesting and spoke from the heart about you know, trying to be creative and being creative in Elizabeth Gilbert's eyes is not necessarily like writing books or drawing pictures. It can be any form of whatever it is you want to do in your life. But I like the concepts and I like the ideas. Four out of five stars because there were parts in the middle that I didn't relate to and I was kind of bored with and I was getting to the point where I was like, I just want the conclusion. Nah. Really good, like I said, especially for creative minds and people who are kind of stuck behind fear. It's it's really awesome. One of my favorite concepts that she came up with was the idea of creating space for your creativity and your fear and letting them live like in the same household but with different rooms and stuff and that fear is allowed to be in his corner of the car or the house but he's never allowed to drive. He's allowed to be there, acknowledge his presence, but he's never allowed to drive. The next book that I read was also on my May TBR. Yay me, I'm actually accomplishing these goals that I set for myself, woohoo. Anyway, it is Sleeping Tom by Evie Fairfall because the waking Gabriel, which is the sequel to Sleeping Tom, comes out in July. I enjoyed this book. I thought this was good. I'm gonna give it a full review like I promised Evie that I would do. I gave it a three out of five stars. I liked it. It was good. Then I finally picked up The Crown by Kira Cass. I love this series. It's so cheesy and so good. And can I just say, I picked it. I'm so happy. I totally pegged who she was gonna pick. Ah, I win. Anyway, I gave it four to five stars because I just enjoyed it. I was so happy with the end of the series. My cousin Lauren reads this series. Laura from Bookies and Cookies is like a huge fan. She actually like knows Kira Cass, which is awesome. We got to talking about it and, and I just was so glad that I finally flipped and read it. And it, ah, uh, it's good. Then I have another recommendation from Jordan at the Jordan Journals. <laughs> Because she just she just gave me like this list. It's just been accumulated over the past like year. And so I finally got to this one, which is actually cool because I won this book, The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, on her channel on one of her giveaways. And I really liked it. Guys, four to five stars. Really interesting series. It's like Criminal Minds, but with teenagers. I thought it was really interesting. I also called Who Did It in this one. I really need to read a book where like I can't predict the ending, but I, the, the, I'd say 99% of the time I get it right. Whatever. I also liked that they're like natural abilities were kind of like superpowers they solve crimes and stuff and there's more of them I found out there's like four more of them and Jennifer Lynn Barnes is coming to Denver so I'm really excited to get to go meet her and to get this book signed and to like explore more of this series because I find it really really intriguing and I want to see where it goes and how the characters develop and 
it'll be interesting. I'm excited. It's really cool. Last but not least, I read The Trials of Apollo, The Hidden Oracle by Rick Riordan. Oh, guys, I missed Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson is back. He does an appearance in this. Cap half Blood is back. Rachel's back. All these people are back. And you get to learn about Apollo. Man, this was such an interesting one because it, he, Apollo is turned mortal as a punishment from Zeus, and, which has happened before in Greek mythology, but he gets to go to Camp half Blood, and it's so interesting. It's, a, it's a, one of his darkest ones yet, which I love because it's so just about guilt and about accepting yourself and very human aspects to it and just humanity and, and, and from it coming from a God status down to humanity and realizing making mistakes, but even that gods can make mistakes and just the forgiveness and humility that's in here is really interesting. I gave it a four out of five stars because I had a hard time with Apollo because he starts out really, really cocky and I was like, oh my God, I don't want to read about him, but that's okay. I, I really did end up enjoying it and enjoying the story and I'm anxious to see where it goes. I just love this world and I just love these characters even if they just make little sneak peeks. I'm okay with that because I love them. And that was a long story, not so short, but those were seven books that I read in the month of May. If you want to comment on some of these, I already encouraged you to comment down below about them and I'd love to talk to you as always um, about these lovely seven books right here. Well, there's six. I read one on audiobook. It's whatever. Stay tuned. I'm, I'm getting started on book battles stuff for episode six, the June episode, um, which I'm thinking we're going to do some little audience involvement. What? Ooh. And then stay tuned for July, man, because July is going to be a whole different ball game. Anyway, this has been my May wrap up. Leave a comment down below. Until next time, guys. Bye! That is why, guys, I conceded and finally went along with the trend and bought myself a little fear so that he can always stay in the space but never drive. Yay, I joined the Pop Funko train. Woot. I like him. I really like how little he is. I don't know, I may need to get more. It's just like Beanie Babies, guys. I don't know why everybody's so obsessed. <laughs> They're cute. They're kind of a little creepy, too, with like the Coraline button eyes. Does anybody else think that? Is that just me? Well, anyway, he's symbolic, so he stays in his corner.